welcome to this episode of Elven Home, in which uh, I begin tentatively the work of building the Art Deco Hotel, uh, do some scenic work around the station, including a flash of inspiration once one Saturday afternoon, uh, and also give you a, a look at uh, a closer look at the two streets that are running behind me with their rakes of Grosley coaches. Uh, before we move on to having a look at those a bit more closely, I just want to mention something which I forgot when I was talking about the inspiration for the Art Deco Hotel, which is a layout called Franklin, which you can see on RM Web and on the Engage forum. And uh, Paul Chapman of Galgon Hall mentioned that to me when he first suggested the idea of an Art Deco style. And Millie Dale on C also mentioned it to me in the comments to the last video. Uh, if you get a chance to go and have a look, do. It's a southern region layout based around the 1930s. The threads in both those forums are really excellent. There's a lot of inventiveness around um, the build. Uh, I think it's been taken down because of a house move and a new one hasn't yet been built. But if you get a chance to go and have a look, I suggest you do go and have a look at both of those. So, on with the video. Let's take a, a closer look at these two streaks running behind me before we move on to start talking about the beginning of the build of the Art Deco Hotel. to start work on actually building the Art Deco uh, Hotel rather than just talking about it. Um, but before I get on to what the work that I've been doing, I'm really grateful to everybody who came back uh, with comments about the Art Deco Hotel uh, and in particular um, to a number of people. Mark Valentine um, pointed out that the building of this kind would have a fire escape um, and so I think I will build a fire escape at the rear of the building to allow people to get out of the building. My original thoughts had been that the means of getting out would be internally. Um, but having looked at building regulations for the 1930s, by that time, they were requiring uh, external means of escape. So that needs to be put into the hotel uh, at its rear, which I will, I will do at the end. Uh, Tony Walton gave me quite a lot of ideas, having worked in the catering trade, about the back of the building and just how busy and perhaps quite um, grungy it might be. Um, I hadn't given thought in the design, for example, where the offices would be and they would be likely to be situated at the back, probably behind where the bar area is. I do need to provide um, access for the kitchens and extractor fans and the like. Um, I'm hoping, and, and apart from um, downpipes to take water away that's coming from the roof and on the individual sills, all other plumbing is internal. Uh, this is the 1930s by, uh, by now. So all the rooms do have facilities, but the plumbing for all of those descend into the basement of this building where they're taken away into the sewer. So I don't need loads of pipes, external pipes, for things like lavatories and the rest, because all of that is dealt with as internal plumbing. Um, Rich, now Baden, I think it's Baden rather than Baden, but if I'm wrong, tell me Rich. Um, also gave me some useful ideas about how I um, achieve a look on the interior using photographs. 
uh, I am finding it very hard to source things so that I could actually uh, put in things like tables and chairs and all that sort of thing. But I think with some uh, photographs going through the windows that may uh, achieve the same effect. And the last one um, from David Fiddler was that the hotel is crying out for a revolving door at the front. Yeah, yes, I'm sure it is. Um, I'm still trying to get him ahead. If I do a revolving door, it will have to work. And doing that at Engage will not be straightforward. But you never know, so you'll have to watch this space and see what I eventually uh, end up doing. Um, the work that I've been doing so far has been to try and start uh, working out how I was going to attach the dowels to the base and, and what, how I needed to cut the bases uh, to allow me to achieve that. Um, and I'm afraid doing that has made me realise I need to go back to the drawing board a little. Um, what you see in front of you is two of the dowels in place on uh, one of the base cards uh, with the cutouts that would be needed to, to take the dowels. At the back, the dowels uh, sit flush with each of the two walls. At the front, you'll remember, I want the dowels to stick out so that the external decoration of the building is and a, a curve is achieved by having strips of plastic of varying length, uh, each one millimetre deep, that that provides um, a decoration that gives the impression of curves going in before the uh, tower in the centre. Um, I did glue all four onto a piece of uh, this card and just let, let it sit about for a couple of days to make sure that I was happy with the kind of overall shape and look. Um, <coughs> and I think the simple answer is I'm not in the slightest. It looks much too big and bulky. The uh, amount of white space or what, whatever colour I choose to, to um, build to, to paint this um, will be substantial because if we the, this will be the door here and uh, uh, leaving aside the ground floor on each of the floors where there are rooms there are two windows either side of the centre section um, and the next window is not round until the middle here with these being 16 millimetre in scale size that's really quite large and will look as though there's huge amounts of wasted space in a building which simply wouldn't be there. Uh, no developer is going to build a building with lots of wasted space. So these just look out of scale, they're much too big, they're much too bulky uh, and it's only actually starting to build it and seeing all four sat there that made me think this just doesn't look right at all. So I'm having to have a rethink there uh, and to, to take things back to uh, an alternative. The alternative is to turn to another piece of quarter dowel that I bought at the same time as the 16 millimeter, uh, which this is a small offcut, which is nine millimeter quarter dowel. Um, and I have started with a test piece. I wasn't going to cut out more of the um, bases. I'd cut all of them out, which was a mistake. Um, and <laughs> I can't use them now because obviously the bits that are cut out are too big. But the 9mm dowel, if I turn this around this way, still gives me the curve around the corner. Uh, but I think that all looks more in scale. Uh, and I will need to go back to the, to the plan and, and redraw it because plainly with, with a smaller diameter curve, I don't need the building to be quite as wide or as long. Um, so it will come much back to this size, I think, overall. Whereas with the, the change on there, it was going to get to be a bit bigger. Um, so that's the, that's the next piece of work that I'm going to be doing. <coughs> uh, also, starting to build this made me think about uh, the way I'm going to construct it. If I go back to this version, I've got to find a way, whichever dowel I use, um, to put the walls on. So I'm going to build it, as I said, I'll be building it floor by floor and there will be a wall coming up either side. There will be a gap here because that's where the wall, I'll leave that there, that's where the wall, that's where the door goes in and at the back I'll, I'll be doing that differently and then there will obviously be walls here. I think I'm going, may have a problem in ensuring there is a nice snug fit between the side of the wall and the wall for the dowel which probably means using um, some plaster to, to fill it in essentially uh, and then sand that back to make sure there's a nice neat uh, corner. And then uh, I'm also going to 
make sure that these extend above the roof uh, and then there will be a wall joining to, to cap the building off uh, so that because uh, I was a bit worried how I was going to put a roof on here um, and shape it to be the right shape but the simple answer is don't shape it. Uh, so I've been doing some work. Uh, I've worked out which windows I'm going to have. Uh, I've worked out that I need to build a fire escape. I've worked out, I think, the basic means of construction. The back of the building is probably uh, that I won't do floor by floor because I want to build the whole building without any windows fixed in place so that it can all be painted because I need to get obviously the wall and the wood, the plastic and the wood, uh, to look the same. Then I can fit the windows in on each floor uh, and then the back of the building can be fitted on as, a, as three pieces probably uh, at the end or maybe two but, but certainly I won't try and do it as one piece because cutting out a single piece of card with all those windows um, is, is asking for, a, for trouble that one window goes wrong right towards the end and you've lost the whole piece of card. Much better to do it in smaller chunks. So that's what scratch building is about, that you start off going to build and then you come across the problems of how you build and also the problems of how you then decorate and paint the thing at the end. I've got a colour scheme in mind, I'm not going to share that with you until you actually see it. Um, so the next uh, section, the next time you see this, I hope to have made more progress in getting the at least the first, the ground floor built. Um, the tower will go on pretty much towards the end, uh, as will the fire escape and the other detailing on the back. So that's where I am on the uh, scratch build. Uh, and now let's move on to have a look at the work that I've been doing on the layout over the last couple of weeks, whilst I've been worrying how on earth I was going to build this Art Deco hotel. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, interlude. I made them this way because I just didn't like any of the um, Belisha Beacons or Belisha Beacons, depending how you pr pronounce Leslie Hall Belisha's surname, um, that were available commercially. Uh, they all looked overscaled to me with too thick a stem for the pole uh, and the globes tending to be uh, too big. Even these, the globes are slightly oversized. Um, the real globes are under a foot in diameter uh, by law, uh, and this is three millimeters. But nonetheless, I think overall the proportions look broadly right. Um, and I'd quite liked to have had them as as flashing, but all the ones that I could see that were flashing, the the scale was just completely wrong. Uh, standing between and on the square uh, that the Belisha beacons allow access to uh, is the uh, fountain, uh, which was the thing that I had, had ordered uh, when I did the last video. It's a little phallic kit. Um, it does come as a, as a kit of parts. Uh, the, the, um, I think it's octagonal uh, fountain bowl all, is all separate little bits that you put together to create the fountain. Um, I painted inside it a green colour because the, the, it's basically brown and I also picked out in gold around the edges of the relief pattern and obviously painted the uh, statue gold because that comes in a green colour. It, it is German in style but on the other hand it's the kind of florid Victorian thing that you would have found around particularly um, to commemorate the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria. 
So that's what I'm taking this to be, that this is Weathertop's Diamond Jubilee statue of 1897 uh, to celebrate 60 years on, on the throne for Queen Victoria. Uh, in front, you can see the Langley kit that I was in the process of building, uh, which again comes as a kit of parts. It's a white metal kit, very easy to put together. Um, the, the water column itself does actually move. I painted everything separate before I, I, I put it together. The instructions suggest that you put it all together and then paint it, but I, I didn't really want to gunge up the uh, movement of the water column. Uh, the base just has primer on it at the moment because until I know what it's going to be sitting in, I don't want to preempt that by doing any painting or weathering to the base. Uh, the base would likely be probably concrete uh, with a, um, a drain in the centre uh, and I'll probably pick that drain out in silver and then go over it with some weathering powders once I know what it's going to be sitting in. Coming back out a little bit, of course it sits next to the coaling stage to allow engines uh, to come off the turntable, if I come out a bit further, which you can just about see, let me just move you around, uh, to come off the turntable to, be, to receive coal and water. Uh, and I was asked whether the, the orange building might be, might be moved to give better sight lines into the station. Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, and you'll see that I've now put some wood to wedge the track uh, to give me an idea of how high I'm going to need the ramp to be able to bring it into the coaling stage. And eventually that track will extend into the coaling stage and about three inches or so to just beyond where you can see the uh, water column. And I, I'm getting close to the point where I can actually start building the ramp and the walls, the retaining walls, that will take it, uh, take that track up and up and in there. And it is inevitable as I build the railway that some sight lines will disappear. But I want to try and make this look realistic. One final piece of work that has been undertaken in the last, uh, didn't take very long, uh, is to begin the work of completing the scenic work on the uh, fire station. And if I zoom in a little, let's just take that up there, you will see that the fire station now has its garden at the front, which I'd always intended there to be. Uh, and it has the paving, the only bit of paving that will be there. And I'll now start work on putting the um, enclosure walls around the fire station itself. And I can also begin, because I've completed, if I zoom back out again, uh, because I've laid cork as to give me the base on which I will be completing the um, scenic work to allow me to do the memorial garden for uh, the war memorial. Uh, so that's the, my plan, as you know, had been to work from the back to the front, and that's slowly coming together. Um, I still have yet to decide what I'm going to do with the space that's on the wooden board that contains the points and double slip for um, the branch line, but that will come to me. Um, and I do, as you know, intend for the gas works now to take up most of the space that's presently vacant between the viaduct and where the road will uh, carry on up towards Weathertop Station. Uh, so that pretty much uh, completes this month's video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video and uh, in particular the um, beginning of uh, scratch building the Art Deco Hotel. Uh, and if you've got any comments that you want to give me, please do, as you'll have seen, that they, they really are most helpful to me, um, they, particularly the things that I forget. Uh, if you've liked the video, please do like, and if you haven't already subscribed, well, please do subscribe. It'd be great to have you along. Uh, and hit the bell notification so you know when I'm uploading. But until I speak to you again in about a fortnight's time, bye-bye. Mm -hmm.